Hello and welcome. Today we bring you a treat. Uh, with us, we have Dr. Neha Gupta. Dr. Gupta, welcome to our, our channel or show today. Thank you, Rahul. So we bringing you Dr. Gupta because she had just published a landmark study in one of the leading journal in critical care medicine. Uh, it is about a rain and angiotensin uh, uh, system as well as uh, adult COVID-19 patients. So Dr. Gupta, so many congratulations to you for publishing uh, that paper. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So our viewers, can you introduce yourself first and then we can ask a few questions to see if it could be helpful for our viewers. So I'm Neha Gupta, I'm a pediatric intensivist and I work at University of Oklahoma in Oklahoma City. Very good. Uh, tell us about your manuscript which you recently published. Uh, what was the reason you wanted to ask that particular question and what are the results coming out uh, in layman's term? So uh, in the beginning of COVID pandemic, uh, there was some uh, research that came out uh, that showed that COVID uh, coronavirus infection invades the host cells through ACE2 uh, receptors, which are angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors. So based on that research, it was thought that RAS inhibitors or renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitors that work on these receptors can upregulate the receptors and can lead to critical illness in COVID-19. So this information was released to the public. And based on this information, a lot of people uh, started uh, stop taking their medications. So these medications are usually used for hypertension management. So following this research uh, that came out, some papers were published that it was probably not uh, the medication that leads to critical illness, but rather could be the comorbidities, including hypertension, diabetes, um, and not the medication itself. So if you stop taking the medications, that can actually lead to worse outcomes. So my aim with this project was to uh, determine the association of prior use of RAS inhibitors in adult hospitalized patients with COVID-19 and their association with the outcomes in these patients while they're admitted in the hospital. So the main outcomes that we saw was uh, patients on these medications uh, tend to be younger. They were more likely to be white, more likely to be male. Um, patients who were on combination of medications uh, with RAS inhibitors and other antihypertensives or those on just other antihypertensives, they were more likely to have comorbidities uh, prior to hospitalization. However, on controlling for uh, pre-hospital comorbidities and uh, demographics, we found that patients on RAS inhibitors tend to have lower mortality compared to patients on other medications. So that was a very interesting finding in our study. So I think based on this, uh, we could say that RAS inhibitors was, were not associated with mortality, rather the mortality was much less in these patients. Well, that's good to know uh, uh, in this regard. I think that uh, that information need to get out uh, on RAS inhibitors and so on and so forth. Uh, but interestingly, so you are a pediatric intensivist. So what was your experience working with adult patient data and challenges or fun thing you had it uh, while you did it? Uh, so do you wanna share with our viewers? So actually, uh, working with adult data, a lot of it is very similar to pediatrics. So at least the research part is quite similar. Uh, however, the severity of illness scoring or some of the scorings that we do in adults is slightly different than uh, pediatrics. So it was actually a fun experience learning about adult data um, and like looking at smoking status and BMI or some of, some of the things that we usually don't uh, look in pediatrics as much. So I think it was a fun experience. Absolutely. I can tell you that I never enjoyed looking at PRISM and p Lord scores compared to Apache and SOPA score. Uh, so I'm sure you had the other end of that part and now you have to deal, uh, deal with, uh, uh, you know, SOPA day one, two or Apache and so on and so forth. Maybe Charles and Comorbid Index for that matter. You kind of already touch upon on that what was surprising to you and you mentioned that people who were on RAS inhibitors, they were on, um, they were less sick and maybe there are many different reasons for that matter as well that, you know, people who are requiring other cardiac medications are things might be a little bit more sicker in, in this regard. So anything else uh, surprised you from the results or the processes when you looked at the data and then whole publication process? Um, so yes, um, I think uh, even though uh, our Apache scores were only available for eight person patients, patients on both medications were actually uh, had higher Apache scores. So they were probably sicker. However, the rate of complications in these patients were quite similar. So we did not find any significant difference between any groups with respect to rate of complications, requirement for mechanical ventilation, hemodialysis, 
or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. So even after controlling for these comorbidities, finding this difference was very surprising. And uh, this finding was hard to explain. Um, some of the theories that we had were um, maybe the other antihypertensive medications, which included beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, diuretics, could have had like an inadvertent side effect in combination with loss inhibitors. Even the patients who were on just other antihypertensive medications, they also had a significantly higher mortality than patients on just ROS inhibitors. So this was a surprising result. And uh, based on previous literature, it was hard to explain that why that would happen. Um, but we had some theories that maybe that uh, other medications affected uh, the heart food response or altered the pulmonary um, shunting and thus oxygenation requirement. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so that kind of leads to my next question. So what is next? Uh, now you have learned from a large data set. Uh, you don't need to reveal any of your secret projects, but um, uh, anything which based on what you have learned now from this observational, large observational study, uh, what would be your next steps or next project you would work on or you want somebody uh, to aspire so they can work on? So, uh, yes, I think uh, explaining this finding will be very helpful for the future. Uh, especially, I don't want the public to stop taking other antihypertensive medications and move towards RAS inhibitors based on the study. So trying to figure out uh, why these other antihypertensive medications um, led to higher mortality compared to RAS inhibitors would be very helpful. And even breaking uh, the groups down between different kinds of antihypertensive medications like beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, diuretics. Uh, it would also be helpful doing a prospective study and trying to figure out whether the patients were compliant with these medications prior to uh, hospitalization. Was there, were their blood pressures controlled during the hospitalization? So these kind of questions uh, can probably be uh, answered uh, based with prospective study. Fantastic. Um, let me ask you this question. At the time of recording of this video, uh, we see that from coast to coast, uh, the pediatric patients are, are are suffering right now, or they are the hospitals are getting filled uh, with RSV. So there's we are like roughly a triple threat. Uh, COVID nineteen still we have some cases going on. Then flu season is upon us at the time of recording this video, and then the RSV is taking in. Uh, so you uh, first of all, uh, is it true that you start seeing th that thing as well? And two is uh, what what you would see, especially being a pediatric intensivist, what implication you see of living through this, uh, this uh, tr uh, trifecta or uh, triple threat for pediatric patients? Yes, so we are seeing a lot of RSV, even at uh, RPQ right now. And um, with COVID-19 still going on, uh, I'm seeing a lot of patients who have combined RSV or rhino enterovirus along with COVID-19 infection. Um, so the RSV itself is making kids very, very sick. So it's very hard to distinguish when they're presenting with multiple viruses being positive, including COVID-19. Um, even though we don't have very specific treatments for COVID-19, uh, when they present with multiple viruses, it's becoming hard to figure out whether we need to treat a COVID-19 infection or not. It may be that they are asymptomatic from COVID itself and just presenting with um, illness from another virus. So that has been the biggest challenge uh, currently in our ICU. Uh, figuring out what we need to treat and how do we need to treat. I know that's a tough situation. I hope that things get better uh, for uh, young kids, for our healthcare providers. Otherwise, uh, systems will quickly get stretched uh, thin and which, which is not good for anybody. Uh, let me ask you, uh, my understanding is this is your first time or maybe one of the few times working with the Society of Critical Care Medicine Discovery Group, uh, especially when the virus registry is done under that, their umbrella. So what has been your experience uh, with, uh, with uh, working as a, as a national society and then their critical care research network uh, called Discovery? So it has been a very um, good experience, actually. Uh, so SCCM Discovery Network has been very helpful. Uh, and it was a um, a pleasure actually collaborating and actually getting access to the all the data and being able to do a national international research. So everybody was very timely with respect to uh, IRB as well as providing the data. And um, there was a lot of guidance from senior mentors all throughout the nation. And they were very helpful with guiding me through this research project and helping figure out, like answer this question. Very good to know. Good to hear that. Uh, that's fantastic. Would you have some advice for uh, somebody 
who is a, who is a junior faculty or newer researcher or who would at the fence not still planning to do some research, what would be their, your advice for them for uh, a, you know, large collaborative research or networking around it on similar path what you have taken? So I would suggest that uh, go for it because uh, even though this is a big project, SCCM does provide a lot of um, support, including uh, research uh, support as well. And if you need a research um, coordinator or um, like a mentor, SCCM was very open to providing those kind of support. So I would say it, go ahead and collaborate with uh, big registries, include like similar to virus registry. And if you have any question, bring it forward and it will be very easy to find a mentor and get all the support you need from the registry. Absolutely, uh, good to know, good to know that. Um, let me ask you our final question. It's a little bit of a fun question. The question is, uh, are you comfortable sharing with our viewers a fun fact about you, which people would not otherwise guess that you know you, you have that skill, ability, or you have that experience, or you've done those things. So are you comfortable sharing a fun fact about you with our viewers? Uh, yes. <laughs> so um, I love adventure sports. So I guess not a lot of people know about that. So I love scuba diving, uh, snorkeling, um, and skydiving. So I've done that too. And it has been a lot of uh, fun. All right. So at least I've done skydiving before I got married. Uh, I was like, what the heck? I'm getting married. Uh, let's go for do it. And that was some experience. I don't think so I can do it now, when especially with two young kids, but I, I'm glad I did it and I'll not do it. It was a very different experience. Uh, and I think people who can, who are not afraid of heights, I would suggest them to do it as well. So good to know that uh, you have interest in skydiving and scuba diving as well. Uh, well, Dr. Gupta, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Uh, many, many congratulations uh, for your recent publication, uh, getting the information out. It's a lot of work, we understand. Uh, hope that inspires others uh, to uh, take on uh, this particular topic uh, on, uh, on, uh, as well as uh, for you to dig in a little bit more now uh, as data is being available and you can ask secondary questions. And then uh, even the folks who have not uh, submitted data, they can ask questions through virus registry. So I hope that uh, you can submit some ideas or at least have some junior mentees uh, to submit that as well. Uh, thank, thank you once again. Thanks for being here today and really appreciate uh, you answering our questions. Thank you so much for inviting me, Rahul. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, those who like this video, please like and subscribe and write in the comment section uh, what topics we should bring back uh, Dr. Gupta uh, for further interviews.